Good evening, I'm Madeline Peel, and this is Community Board 8 Speaks. I'm here with Marjorie Perlmutter, who is the co-chair of the Landmarks Committee of Community Board 8, and this is a very exciting committee, uh, and Marjorie and Jocelyn Strauber are the co-chairs of uh, this very important board group. Uh, tonight's agenda is going to be very exciting. We have um, a major presentation, don't we, or, um, that has to do with our Parks Committee as well as our Landmarks Committee. And um, right. could you tell me a little what, bit more about what's that? What's happening is the, uh, this is something that doesn't happen that often, but the two different committees, the Parks and the Landmarks Committee, are meeting together as a joint committee to discuss the uh, the precinct in Central Park, the police station, that is an extraordinarily beautiful Romanesque style building that was built around the time of the construction of Central Park in the late 19th century. And uh, it is in very bad condition and in desperate need of repair. And the, the police department is actually involved in doing the restoration work and they've, they've prepared for us some materials so that we as committee members can study up before the, the committee meets and the materials show that it's an extremely beautiful project and well presented and we're looking forward and to seeing it. You'll actually all get a chance to uh, to take a look at that too because that's one of the, the, the bits that will be featured in our committee meeting tonight. We also have an application from the Stanhope Hotel. Uh, I'm sure you've heard about the Plaza Hotel and its conversion to residential use mm -hmm. and created quite a stir, especially in the Landmarks community. Uh, the Stanhope Hotel apparently is doing similar conversion to convert the building to residential use, and I'm not sure also may have some hotel rooms on the lower floors, but they're coming to us for a rooftop addition. And more to follow when you see that presentation. I'm not exactly sure what the details are. Oh, that will be exciting as well. And we have a variety of other things from installing a flag in front of a school building to uh, some rooftop additions and rear yard additions and facade restorations. Yeah, pretty much the whole thing. I'm going to start now. We have a very, very full agenda, so we're going to have to really move this along. There are 11 items and we must be out of here by 10 o'clock or they will shut the doors on us and you won't get to present your project. Um, this is this is the Landmarks Committee of Community Board 8. I'm the co-chair, Marjorie Perlmutter, and Jocelyn Strauber will be joining us. The, the first item is actually a joint Parks Committee and Landmarks Preservation Committee item to discuss the police precinct in Central Park, but I just wanted to explain what the Landmarks Committee does. Um, we hear applications that are forwarded to us by the Landmarks Preservation Commission. They're applications to modify buildings located in historic districts or historic landmark buildings and to uh, request modifications that might alter in some way the historic character of the building. Uh, we review whether the proposed modification is appropriate or not. Uh, we, we, as a committee, discuss with the applicants and uh, also open up to comments from the public. And based on that information, we, we pass a resolution where we make a recommendation for, to the full community board aid about whether we think the application should be approved or not. And the full community board then votes on our recommendation at the full board meeting, which is this Wednesday, July 20th. It's marked on your agenda if you have a copy at 7 p.m. at the Ramaz School, 125 East 85th Street. It starts at 7. Um, there's a public session at which you may come and speak about the application. And then after that, the committee presents the materials to the full board in what's called closed session, so you can um, actually speak to that. Uh, so we're going to have the first application, which is the Central Park Precinct. Uh, 86th Street, Transverse Road, Central Park, Scenic Landmark. Detective Daniel Deal is the applicant. Uh, Central Park Precinct res Renovation. We have an applicant. Please tell us who you are. Hi, I'm Fred Bash from Carlsberger Architecture. Oh, I'm the uh, project manager for the project. And 
and uh, with me today we have uh, Jane Ratner, also from Carlsberg Architecture, and one of our consultants, Claudia Cavanaugh. I, I, I realize the time is short, but um, it, it is a complex project, so there are some important things we have to hit on. The first one is, um, you know, why do the police think they need to renovate? And uh, that issue, uh, I think, is uh, can be highlighted by just the condition of the existing building. Uh, the building was in such bad shape that um, in uh, 2000, uh, the police decided that they uh, would need to renovate. They uh, asked us to uh, look into providing with them a, a, a temporary building, um, and that was erected in 2001. That's the building that's on the Transverse Road where the parking lot used to be. Uh, the, uh, the project um, is uh, to renovate the existing building, uh, which was an original uh, park building. Uh, designed by Jacob Rudd Holden in uh, 1871. Um, we, have, we know a lot about the building. Um, we have uh, a good percentage of the original drawings uh, that Jacob Rudd Holden did when uh, he was uh, the parks, uh, working for uh, the Parks Department as the chief architect. This is after he was assisting Vox. Uh, and uh, we uh, spent a fair amount of time studying these uh, original drawings, you know, to uh, an understanding of how the original building was configured, as well as the, the elements of the building. Uh, we also have historic photos, which uh, Claudia will talk about in a moment. We see this as a real opportunity for the building. It has not been used. When a building is not used, it is neglected. And you know from the comprehensive condition survey that we've done that there are a lot of issues at this point in terms of um, uh, problems with the roof and leaks coming in and problems with the brownstone and the building is really in need of a comprehensive restoration put everything back in order and we see this as a real opportunity to do that and so in terms of looking at our approach to the design of um, this new project uh, there's a couple of key things one is that because um, overall the complex does look very much the way it did historically and um, we feel, and we know that many of the alterations that were not so much in keeping with the original design happened in 1935. Our intent is to bring the complex back as much as possible to what it looked like pre-1935, and to do that wherever we can. On the other hand, we know that there are some modern insertions that need to occur for this to function as a police precinct. And in those cases, our approach is for those insertions to be simple, modern looking, and very clearly distinct from the historic. So you will always know the difference between the new and the old. And to give you a little bit of an idea of um, what we're bringing back to the historic appearance, there were originally a set of doors here leading on to the um, courtyard here that were filled in in the 1930s, and we'll be bringing back that opening. And there was a much more ornamental slate roof. Since we have to do work on the roof in any case, we'll be bringing back that ornamental slate. Uh, this is a historic photo showing some of that very open feeling in the courtyard, one of the columns, and then just looking through to where it's open. This is current with that brick that I told you about before in that shooting range. The brick will come out, and though this, this still needs to be an interior space, there'll be a lot of glazing you, so you get back more of that open feeling that the sheds originally had. The proposal is to, to add a, a lightweight uh, metal canopy uh, to the existing courtyard. Um, I think the section's on your side, then. No. Uh, the lightweight metal canopy, uh, the idea behind it, it's the, the central idea of, of the design, is that um, the courtyard, uh, as well as the rest of the buildings, designed at a fairly high level. In order to read the courtyard, which is the central organizing principle, um, we can't occupy the courtyard. So we have to lift the canopy above the ridge line of the roof but we wanted to keep it low, as low as possible, while still achieving the fact that, uh, as Claudia mentioned, we don't want it directly attached to the building. We have an independent structure that supports the lightweight metal canopy, as well as the clear story that separates the, um, the canopy from the existing building, as well as allowing light to come into the building. Look. Hey. So you can see in, in this section, as well as, as this section, that, that basically the, the views inside the courtyard are, are preserved by lifting the canopy up. Yeah, go ahead. 
And so we have a, a, a rendering showing uh, some of the elements that we were talking about. This is the canopy, and inside you can see the, in the, the columns that actually support the, uh, the canopy itself. We have a structural glazing wall that goes across uh, the uh, facade, allowing the views of the courtyard to be maintained, as well as visibility from the front desk out to the parking lot. Uh, uh, the materials that we're, we're talking about, um, a, a granite floor that runs essentially like carpeting from the parking lot through the courtyard um, straight into the building, as, as if that glass dividing line weren't even there. Um, I think for speed, we should go to the public first quickly. Is there anybody from the public who would like to speak on this? And then from the committee, just questions quickly around, and then we'll go to comments. Yeah. Um, are there any park elements going to be added to this plan, such as new trees, new plantings, any um, other park elements, or anything about the plan that changes the public's use of the park? Um. No, there are no um, landscape elements in the traditional sense. We, we are proposing to put some bollards along the new the proposed parking area. Um, there are some bollards that would separate the parking lot from the sidewalk. Um, and the rest are really interior to the you know traditional utilitarian area of the parking lot. There's some stairs and some other elements like that, but there are no, there are no plantings proposed. Um, basically, this area um, has always been and on the other side where the parks department is basically utilitarian working space. And so basically, we're proposing to use it as a parking lot and provide as many parking spots as possible. Uh, and then the other part was, I'm sorry, the other part was, is there anything about this plan that alters the public's use of the park? Or the public's enjoyment no. of the park? I don't say no. Do I have a motion from anyone? Motion to approve? Yes. Second. Good. Okay. So we're going to take a vote. Ashby. Yes. Anderson. Davis. Yes. Cleveland. Yes. Price. Yes. Levin. Not voting for close. I'm an auxiliary quick. Oh, there you yeah, go. Hey. Sorry. Okay. Uh, Liston. Yes. Partial. Crawl mutter, yes. Peel. Yes. Crawl mutter, yes. yes. Barry. Yes. Yes. Uh, Sullivan. Yes. 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 Okay. Thank you very much. All right. The next item is 962 Madison Avenue, the Upper East Side Historic District. Mr. Pete Faircloth is the applicant. Application is to legalize an existing gate. Hi. Um, I don't want to change anything. Uh, this is my oh, tell us who you are. Oh, I'm a, a sort of Madison Avenue. We're at 962 Madison Avenue. Uh, we're being told that our gate is a different gate. And we need to change it. Or actually, we need to get rid of our gate, but there's no place in the store we can put gate. What is the name of the shop again? FM Allen. FM Allen. FM Allen. Could you pass the picture for me? Sure. What establishment do you have? We do retail. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what type of company? We do hot weather clothing. Safari trips. Oh, okay. Yes, yes. Is that so it goes up under the awning? Is that? It's under the awning. Oh, so it's a rolling grill. So if, um, did you get a violation that said that you should remove your rolling grill? Is that uh, what? My landlord did. Your landlord did. Do you have a copy of the violation, for chance? No, unfortunately. How long have you been at the Two years. And you just got a violation? Yes. I mean, where is the landlord the got it a while back, but then it's, they said they were going to handle it. But their way of handling it was to remove all security. Is, can you show us? They took the gate down? Is they there were going a, to take the gate down, and I said no. Do we have a picture of the gate closed? I do not have a picture. I think the basic thing we need is a picture of the gate. Well, let's, let's just see what, yeah, what, the, what do they want to do. 
Do they want me to get rid of all security? Yep, but that's not. No, no, they that's don't not, want that. That's no, not that. Uh, they offered to cover the glass in uh, shatterproof material, but. Who is they? Just my landlord. Your landlord. Yeah. But if you look here, the glass is actually secured by three screws. Like, the three screws, it's a lot of I, Can I ask you, it's sort of a procedural thing. Have you yeah. met with the Landmarks Commission staff? They sent me here. They sent you yes. here. Did they? Did you talk to them at all about what the, your options were at Landmarks? No, 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 wait a second. The, uh, well, how did you phrase your question? You called them and you said... What's going on here? Said what's going on here, and they said go to the community board. They said board. go to your community board, and then we'll see. Uh, yeah, I'm, I don't know who. Vegetable. I don't really know. Well, you know so somebody who doesn't know what he's. Yeah, doing, you, you know, I, it's well, well, so well, well, well. Okay, <laughs> so here's here's how the process works. Okay. okay, what you should do is you're here you're here prematurely. Okay. What you should do is photograph the building as you've done, but also with the gate closed, okay. so that they can see the entire thing. Um, get as much information as you can about when the gate was installed. Okay. You're trying to pr trying to prove that it was grandfathered. That you really do need to, for one, you really yeah. do need to work with some professionals who do this right, kind right, of stuff, right. right? So, first option is to talk to the landmark okay. staff with the photographs sitting down with them, okay. okay, and see if they can help you come up with something. Second option is to work to hire an architect who do, does this right. kind of work. And makes it a lot easier because they already know what all the products are that might make this is it a resolvable a landmark district. So yeah, you right have right. to hire a, a, an architect who's a who knows landmark board architecture. Very important. Let's um, go to landmarks with all your papers, with right. all your pictures. Take a copy of the violation. Take everything with you. Okay. Right. But don't forget the photo of the gate down. Right. Okay. Sorry about that. And if you have questions, feel free to call. You can call the board office and they'll give you my number and I can talk you through it if you're lost. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for being so patient. Next is number eight. Sorry, eight. 995 Fifth Avenue. That's the Stanhope Hotel, Metropolitan Museum Historic District. Uh, Mr. John Warden is the applicant, a hotel building designed by Rosario Candela and built in 1925. Application for to construct a rooftop addition and to construct planting beds at the sidewalk. Also renovation of the facades. Okay. Also for the Stanhope Hotel. The uh, name is going to be retained, but we're taking off the hotel portion because our plan is for conversion to our residential throughout the building. Uh, the, the work that we're proposing to do essentially is encompasses two main areas that we are to speak to you about, which is the ground floor where there is currently a, the uh, canopies for the, cat, the sidewalk cafe that existed while the hotel was in operation. You can see here in this picture. And then for the work that we'll be doing there, which is landscaping, we have our uh, landscape architect in Taken here to speak to you about the scope of the work there on, on, on the sidewalk level. And then at the top of the building, we'll be talking about a, a rooftop addition above the 16th floor penthouse that had been built as part of the original structure in 1960. So I'm going to have Kate start. I have to talk to you about the work on the ground floor. We're proposing a planting plan that's consistent with the adjacent uh, nearby blocks um, on Fifth Avenue, which is um, a lot of uh, masks of evergreen plants that form a structure against which um, are some more decorative things. Um, plant pockets where seasonal um, plants could go with um, animals or bulbs in the springtime. Generally, in a symmetrical arrangement. Um, around the front um, entrance. The other, the other element is the it's a rooftop addition. Um, you can see in some of the existing photographs here, and we have others that I'll show you as well. This is a historic photograph uh, taken shortly after the building was completed. It had the rooftop addition, and you can only 
actually see a small portion of it from this position here. But one thing in addition to this is also that the facade, if you notice on it, has all the air, two air conditioning units. That was done in the 70s. The proposal is to remove those and restore the brick back to what the original facade would look like. And then you're going to have central air conditioning? Yeah, central air conditioning. Right. All right. Good evening, Shelly Freeman, Freeman and Godbaum. I represent the Board of Directors of 993. We have we have some a number of people here tonight, including the President of the Co-op Board himself, I'd like to speak. Uh, we have a number of issues, um, but but one of them is not is not the architect. We, we have we have uh, a lot of faith in, in Mr. Setra's work, and we've seen it before. Our problem here is with building ownership and management, and it all goes to preservation, but in two very critical respects. One, um, we we believe that they're not taking care of their landmark. This building has has uh, had some notoriety of late. In February, it was a solid ice block from the eighth story down when pipes broke and no one took advantage of it for days. Uh, chunks of ice fell through the scaffolding. The police had to shut down the street. Uh, this was also the building that caused an entire block to lose its Verizon telephone for, for the, a service for a few days after a major, two weeks, thank you, after a major line was cut. Um, and things got a little bit worse for us in terms of our concerns because this applicant is the same company that was responsible for that, that owns the site of 100th and Broadway mm -hmm. that had some problems last week. So we think that from a preservation standpoint, we'd like to slow it down a little. We'd like the board to uh, delay taking action on this. We have been working with them from, for uh, almost a month on their construction issues and only read on the web, Landmark's website this application is fine. So we're a little bit surprised to be here tonight we haven't had a chance to, to really look at the plans. From an appropriateness standpoint, it can be seen from the steps of the Met, and we don't really have to go beyond that. If you remember the application of the very Mount School, whose mechanicals originally could be seen from the Met, this board required, uh, strong, strongly advised the Landmarks Commission to make sure the applicant pushed back the mechanicals so they could not be seen from the steps of the Metropolitan Museum of Art. I'd like to ask the presenters if maybe they would, since the neighbors would like to talk to them, and we always advise that, if they would consider withdrawing this from being heard at Landmarks this week, is it, or next week, okay, whenever, so and postpone it for at least a month and come back to us next month. Or not next month, September. Well, I don't know. Well, no, we meeting. have one item next month. Could so be. it could be next month. We could be having a meeting next month. So would, would they be, would, would you be willing to do that before we go any further? I would prefer not to do that. I think that, uh, you know, with all due respect to Shelley and, and Mr. Feinberg, who I also know, uh, the issues that he's bringing up are, I believe, are of a construction-related uh, you know, <coughs> I think we are here to present our scheme for how we will preserve the building. Obviously, we didn't come tonight prepared with our construction managers to talk about the construction process and some of the things that have come up. I do appreciate their concern, and if I lived next door, I would, of course, always you know, be, be concerned as well if it was anyone. Uh, I, I think that what we, what we need to, what, what we're asking uh, or to review here are the design issues for the preservation work that we intend to do. And we have continued, and we have since, since February, and since, since uh, the client has taken over the ownership of the building, uh, there, there have been discussions uh, with, with the co-op board and their representatives on some of these issues. Uh, obviously, not, it doesn't seem like every issue has been resolved to, to their total satisfaction, but we continue to, or the owner continues to at least attempt to address some of these concerns and work with them as, as much as possible. Um, just After the uh, presenters actually asked to a reasonable request, I'd like to point out that just a few moments ago we turned down and we failed to approve an application that was visible from the public way, minimally visible. That was two feet. Right. Uh, we have a we have a situation where we get turned down. Right. But I would think risk, risking that is it, it, not perhaps in your best interest, certainly not in the community's <coughs> best interest and not in the community board's best interest. Community board what we do best is bring people together, not tear them asunder. So if you could reconsider that, otherwise I'd invite the community board uh, couple of members to vote you down. 
So, I mean, I think that if you wait a month and you talk to your neighbors and you can come to a solution that's satisfactory to everyone, and you come back, I think how they take care of the building, it's not just what they're presenting to us. I think these are some very important points as far as a landmark goes. I think that instead of getting a, a, a no vote, uh, we, will, we will go back and come back to you in a month from now. Would you withdraw it from landmark for so this month? Yeah, that we have to. We right. have to know that. Right, yeah. otherwise we have to well, vote I, I think on it. Would, otherwise yeah, we have to vote on it. Yeah, we would do that. We would, uh, we would do that as well. Yeah. Good night. Good night. Good morning. Yeah.